Welcome to Star Six Minis. My name is Tian, and I love painting miniatures. I also love making my miniatures unique or stand out in some way. Sometimes my minis will be different in their color scheme, pose, or I'll use a particular effect. And sometimes it is just painting a part of my miniature until it looks good or the way I think it's supposed to. I try to get ideas from my friends' minis, art books, other miniature painters, and all over. As miniature painters that paint for the tabletop, the first battle we have is getting rid of all the gray plastic, meaning we need to put paint on our models. However, when this is done, the second battle is getting rid of all the black plastic, meaning we need to do something to those plain bases that break our immersion and leave our miniatures without context. Each base or set of bases for a unit can help tell the story of where that unit finds themselves most often, whether it's a snowy planet, desert dunes, jungle undergrowth, or mountainous terrain. We want our miniatures to look like they are characters somewhere rather than plastic models on bases. But if you want to learn how to make miniature bases like these, stick around, it's super easy. First, I cleaned up these bases because I tried and tested a few techniques on them that I didn't like. It's easier to clean bases than minis. I sand down the top surface to ensure the glue I'm going to be placing there has some texture to grip onto and to ensure that all the leftover bits from the previous basing are gone. I then just glued everything on. Just kidding. I need to plan what I want where. There's a couple of things I need to remember when composing a base. First thing, don't make it too busy. Different effects can look cool, but all of them together, or too much of a good thing, will draw the attention away from your miniature. Add enough environment to show where your miniature is and to make it a bit more interesting. It's not intended to be a diorama, that is a whole different ballgame. The second thing, make sure your models will fit on the base you're designing. It's easy to get carried away making a cool little tile, forgetting a big model that you spend hours painting will be glued right on top of it. Third point, have a theme. Consistency in a unit is important to create the idea that the unit is walking in the same area. If one model in a unit looks like they are walking through a swamp and the model next to it is walking through a desert, it tarnishes the whole effect. Obviously create some variation between your models, but try to stick to one overarching theme. Point number four. In the same breath, try to stick to the overall theme of your army. I like to base each of my units slightly differently, reflecting the nature of who they are and what they can do. For example, these interceptors can teleport across the battlefield, and I try to include some energy glowing and dissipating into the ground, reflecting that they just teleported to the spot. But the general look will be uniform within my whole army. Point number five, use what you have. You really don't need boxes and bags of G-dubs or other branded tufts, sand or special basing bits. Sure, some of these items may create a bit of more variety and you're welcome to explore it as an option, but it's definitely not necessary. Pieces of wood, sticks, Leaves and bark, sand from your garden, outside on the curb, or material from all over can make good basing materials. I think it was Uncle Adam that recommended kitty litter as rough stones, and I've been using it ever since. I'll pa post a link to the video in the description. Plastic shavings from cleaning up the mold lines from your models make for excellent additional battlefield debris. Even flour and seeds make for good additions. Midwinter Minis has a great video showing what can be done with some imagination and cardboard. Be creative. Don't throw away anything and start seeing the potential of every micro garbage and refuse, even that big box of bits that you haven't opened in a year. And because this is Star 6 Minis, the sixth thing to remember is to experiment. Don't be afraid to do something different, like adding a light source to your base, or something that insinuates something else happening next to the base you are making. If you mess up or you don't like the result, you can just rip it off with a hobby knife and start fresh, like I did at the beginning of this video. Unless you use super glue. I don't recommend that you use super glue. But I do recommend you go dig in your bits, boxes and bags and see what cool treasures you've hidden away. Let's be honest, if you haven't used them by now, you might as well get some use out of them for your bases. After using bits, bark, cork from wine bottles and sticks, I designed the rocky sandy landscape that my models will now be waging war in. Next, I spread an even layer of craft glue across the base. 
I've used super glue and contact glue in the past, and they have their advantages, but I'd found normal PVA or craft or white glue that dries. I place the bits, kitty litter, I mean bigger rocks, wood chunks and sand to taste. Every inch of the model doesn't have to be covered. Remember, it shouldn't be too busy, unless that's the look you're going for. It's okay to leave some of the bare base exposed. The PVA will create some natural random texture, or you can put some plaster of Paris or powdery, powdery flowery substance there to create a very fine ground texture. I had extra bits and bobs from my bits boxes. Again, you can't go wrong. Exposed wire, guns, grenade packs, skulls, a door hatch from that rhino sprue you never needed. If it fits thematically, you can try to find a place for it. Allow enough time for the PVA glue to dry. I've placed mine in the sun to dry and haven't had any issues. I've experienced that some of the finer sand and gravel particles can flake off and some of the wood that will become rock can chip off when I paint or handle the model later on. To prevent this, I dilute PVA or white glue with water in a ratio of about one part PVA to nine parts water. Um, you can spritz this on with an atomizing spray bottle or just dab it on gently with a brush. This creates an extra layer of protection. In fact, some people make their own varnish or even primer paint using acrylic paint and PVA glue in the same manner. After waiting for all of this to dry properly, next up, I base coat it all black and I block in the colors. Blocking in the colors means I paint a single coat of paint in the color that I want every area to be, where I want it to be. Here and there, I do a rough transition where necessary, like between light and heavy gravel. But generally, I try not to work too delicately as this is supposed to look rough. It is the outdoors, it is a mountainous terrain. I wait for the colors to dry and then do a black wash. This can be a wash in brown or whatever color suits your base the best. Again, this is just normal acrylic paint I had at hand watered down very thinly. No need to use expensive washes here. Next comes a bit of a trick to make the bases pop. Select two colors to dry brush on. A lower dirt tone, usually a lighter brown or red, can be dry brushed around the base of all protruding objects. Remember, dry brushing is a quick and rough edge highlight. So make sure that you're not painting a different tone layer. You don't want a whole new layer of paint on the entire part of the miniature you're painting. You really want as little paint as possible on your brush, just picking up the edges as you brush quickly over the bits that you want to add that bottom tone to. Next, I dry brush the upper dirt tone, often a gray or a light tan color on the upper half of these exposed objects and the top of any gravel. You can decide what looks best for you and the base you built. The two tones of high light dry brush makes the base interesting and will draw the viewer's attention to all of the little bits and bobs that you added.
Next, paint the rims of your bases. Some people paint it gold, brown, blue or black. Decide what you like best, but I prefer black. This not only makes your base look neater and more intentional, but it makes your whole base and miniature pop. At this point, we can call it done. But if we want to add some extra character and interest to our bases, we can spend a little bit more time painting the remaining details. Finally, we can seal our base before sticking on our model. The choice is normally between three kinds of sealer or varnish. Matte, which makes color look flat and less shiny. Gloss, which makes color pop and looks more shiny. Or satin, which is somewhere in between matte and gloss. I'm a fan of matte finishes, but different finishes can add to different effects. Mixing matte and gloss varnish can also lead to interesting results and can contribute to the environment and model you are trying to show off. For example, a gloss medium or a gloss varnish will help something look wet when contrasted to a matte finish around it. It can also give the impression of a polished surface like tiles or gemstones when contrasted with matte dirt or a carpet around it. And there we have it. I think these bases look pretty awesome. I hope you found this guide valuable and that you now feel confident to change your black plastic bases into another aspect of your miniature. Feel free to ask a question or make a suggestion below. If you want to support this channel, you can like and subscribe or even hit the bell icon if you want to get notified when I upload a new video. Also, head on over to my Patreon page if you feel so inclined. Thanks for watching my video. Until next time, this is Tian from Star 6 Minis, hoping you enjoy painting every mini.